Welcome to part two, the Shader Sandbox and GLSL code. The Shader Sandbox website is a branch of the GLSLSandbox.com code where we keep a copy of all gen node fragment shaders that are shipped with structure. It has the ability to search for shaders by name and a link that will create a template for a generic shader that can be used as the basis to create your own shaders. The shaders run inside of a WebGL context on the website and can be modified to see changes in real time or to debug code. The text of the website needs to be saved to a plain text file with a suffix of .glsl and copied onto the front SD card from structure to be used within structure, and we'll cover that in just a moment. A quick note here. The shaders that run and compile on the Sandbox website are running through your computer's GPU, which is magnitudes more powerful than Structure's GPU, so performance may vary between the two systems. Shaders that run in the Shader Sandbox website might not run on Structure at all. Before we go changing existing shaders, or converting other shaders we have found, we're going to look at some of the template shader code we get when we click on the Create New Shader beta link and examine some of the properties of the GLSL code. We will also go over some additional functions the website has to help prepare the shader to run on and be modulated by structure. This is a very simple generator shader for structure and contains code parts that are common amongst fragment shaders. There are GPU and environment variables being set. There are custom variables being sent to the shader code. There are comments and some global variables being defined. There are often subroutines after the variables and before main, but there aren't any in this code. And then there's the starting point of the shader, the main subroutine. Going over this shader line by line, we see that line one is a flag that the code is setting for the WebGL context it is running in. This is required by the website, but is not needed for shaders running on structure. Lines two through nine are variables that are specific on how structure's code interacts with the shader. Different websites or applications that use GLSL fragment shaders will generally have different variable names that they send to the shader in this area. Lines three and four are textures with the data type of sampler 2D. A texture can be thought of like an image or a frame of video or the rendered canvas of another fragment shader. The fragment shader nodes called fx use the text variable as the input to what it is going to affect in its main subroutine. And the mix nodes use both text and text2 as inputs and then mixes that information within the main subroutine before outputting the canvas. Tres is the size of the canvas. It's fixed at 720 by 480 pixels, and then we scale that to NTRC or PAL, depending on how the structure is configured. Line 6 has F params, which is a VEC4, so it's a vector that contains four float values. By default, we map the CV1X to F params 0, the CV2Y to F params 1, and CV3 to F params 2. We use F params to modulate parameters in the shader from structure. Line 7 has an I params, which is a vector of four integers, and we use that behind the scenes. Line 8 contains F time, which can be thought of as the number of frames elapsed. It counts from 0 to 1 and then resets itself and adds 1 to I time, which is on the next line. I time is the number of seconds elapsed since the shader has started. Lines 10, 11, and 12 are comments that we'll parse to get the display names for F0, F1, and F2 when the shader is running on structure. We use the mix commands on line 13 through 15, in this case, to normalize the incoming values from structure to be between 0 0.5 and 0.95. Sometimes you'll want to change these minimum and maximum values so the incoming parameter will look good for any value sent to the shader. Lines 17 and 18 contain global variables that we will use in our main subroutine. Time can be considered as the elapsed time, seconds, colon, frames, since the shader was started. It's a common variable in many fragment shaders and is often used to modulate variables and create motion in the shader. Resolution is an alias for the structure-defined variable Tres. They're the same thing, 
The fragment shader's job is to determine the color of every fragment or pixel on the canvas being displayed. So this main subroutine is run against every fragment on the canvas once per frame and then output it. Here we set the color for the fragment with the reserved keyword gl underscore frag color. This is a VEC4 that represents the red, green, blue, and alpha, or transparency, values of the fragment as floats between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. In this simple shader, F0 is the red value, F1 is the green value, and F2 is the blue value. If you move the sliders at the top left corner of the window, you will see the output preview change colors. As I mentioned before, the F param variables are meant to simulate controls coming from structures, so moving the sliders is akin to turning the offset knobs like CV3 or sending MIDI continuous controller information to the shader. You can reset the sliders to the default positions by clicking the F0, F1, and F2 buttons. Next to each slider is a drop down menu that allows you to send a ramp of values from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 and drop back to 0.0, .0 at the frequency set by the slider value. Lower numbers or smaller numbers will be a slower ramp, and higher numbers on the slider will be a faster ramp. Or this drop-down menu can be set to sine, and in this option it will send the values of the sine between 0 and 1 at the frequency set by the slider value. And that's the quick introduction to what a GLSL fragment shaders look like and how we interact with them from structure. In the next part, we're going to be making some changes and loading those new changes onto structure.